Hello students, welcome to today's class. Today we will see the use of small groups in bringing about positive changes in community. Before moving on to that, first let us see what groups and social actions mean and what are the objectives of social actions. Well, a group is a collection of more than two people who have the same identity, they have the same definition of who they are, what attributes they have and how they relate to and differ from specific outgroups. And social action is the practice of taking action, usually as part of an organized group or community, in the direction of greater equity, economic and social justice. The objectives of social action is the proper shaping and development of sociocultural environment in which a richer and fuller life may be possible for all its citizens. Mishra in 1992 has identified the following goals of social action, which includes the prevention of needs, solution of mass problems, improvement in mass conditions, influencing policies and programs, an introduction of new mechanisms and policies, redistribution of power and resources, and improvement in health, welfare and education. Now, why should community psychologists engage in social action? Because social action empowers and energizes population that have traditionally been powerless or haven't understood their potential for power. And it unifies communities and demonstrates to the world that communities are a force to be reckoned with. And social action could motivate people to take positive action that can lead to long-term social change and it can be the beginning of a process that would end in a more unified larger community. Small groups have become popular because of their ability to effect change and small groups are being used in social action to bring about economic development, to better the condition of poor, to rid the society of social ills and to change the age-old norms. And in social movement, if we take, India's historic independence from Great Britain was a result of strategic small actions from a dedicated few. And the civil rights movement of 1950s and 60s all formed small groups who engaged in sit-ins and keeping up people's morale. The women's movement was built upon small consciousness raising which enabled millions of women to reflect on their identity. The personal is political is seen in hundreds of face-to-face -face gathering which resulted in a shift in gender attitudes in the society. And the anti-nuclear movement in the late 1970s formed affinity group as part of direct action efforts to prevent power plants from being built. Situation requiring small groups intervention are as diverse as the source of oppression and suffering. The holistic notion of health and well-being require community psychologists to intervene at the personal, relational and collective level. Problems of abuse, homelessness and discrimination have multiple sources and manifestations which go beyond what any one individual can do but the repercussions of it are deeply felt at the individual level. Therefore, to help these individuals cope with suffering, they require small group interventions where community psychologists and others would focus and identify on their assets and build their resilience and strength. So small group interventions are paths and strategies towards coping and social transformation at the same time. And these interventions may occur in mental health centers, community centers, adult education centers, schools or as a part of a prevention program. And these interventions may be directed by community, clinical, social or organizational psychologists. And the skills require a combination of compassion and empathy with the ability to challenge preconceived notion of community members.
people's needs are determined by the situational context in their lives. So, community psychologists find it difficult to have set of values before they meet the people and understand their problem. If we take the example of victim of abuse, during certain phase of their recovery, they may need more compassion than assertiveness and self-determination. They may not have the emotional strength to deal with the abuser or with the members of society who re-victimize them. After a period of reflection and participating in self-help groups, they may be ready to fight and help those who have been equally victimized. So the questions that community psychologists face when they do not have predefined values or what does this individual need right now? How his or her needs would change over the course of the relationship? And they determine this in collaboration with the group and the individual they work with to bring about positive change. Now, having understood how small group interventions work and the values, let us see how the small group interventions are important at the personal level, research has documented some of the beneficial aspects of counseling and therapies, which include better coping, enhanced self-concept, increase in self-esteem, improved life satisfaction, etc. And at the relational level, small group interventions could bring about positive outcomes in improved relationships, balance group dynamics, and taking part in decision-making process of oneself and others. So, in bringing all this personal and relational positive outcomes could lead to this kind of positive personal and relational outcome could strengthen social capital, reduce the prevalence of mental health problems, improve community safety, and even generate social action to challenge oppressive norms at the collective level. So, we see that social action and small groups intervention are very important in bringing changes in personal, relational, and collective level. People who are effective changers go through identifiable stages, which could be applied to small group work. And these stages include pre-contemplation, contemplation, preparation, action, maintenance, evaluation, and follow-up. In pre-contemplation, the group needs to review its origin and aim. In cases where the group is mandated, as in patients in psychiatric hospital or youth in court-ordered treatment, there may be feelings of animosity towards the leader or community psychologist. So community psychologists need to clarify feelings and legitimize group's existence. And group work also requires some contemplation with respect to values and working principle. So the group need to refine and define areas of work, establish principles for working together, validate misgivings and hesitations. And it's useless to say how important this stage of preparation is. Change is hard and people would not go for a change without concrete plans and achievable goals. So this need that the group devise plan for achieving personal and group goals. And coming to the stage of action, People need a great deal of support to experiment with new ways of being and relating to the world. Groups can act as a powerful resources in bringing about positive change or getting rid of undesirable ones. And literature on mutual help confirms that empowerment often grows out of social support and solidarity. But there could also be norms of conformity that could suppress creativity and power dynamics can further oppress vulnerable members Therefore, attention to the entire process is crucial in all the stages of group work. And planning for action without having a plan for maintenance is a recipe for failure. But groups can be powerful in creating norms of accountability. If we take Alcohol Anonymous group, create powerful pact among its group, which helps members in abstaining from alcohol and groups should develop norms and procedures to sustain and institutionalize change either in people's behavior or social changes. Now, in group work, evaluation is also essential and groups should not leave its evaluation to be dealt at the end because 
there may be animosity or differences in opinion among group members which has to be identified for which community psychologist and the group should ensure that there is a friendly environment where they could express their feelings and sort out any issues. And the last stage is follow up. Part of maintenance and evaluation is follow up. Setting dates for reviewing new practices, assigning roles for championing new procedures, animating processes that keep an innovation alive are all parts of follow up. So group should institutionalize procedures to help group members to remain accountable to each other. Therefore, for the successful small group interventions, community psychologists and the workers should make sure that they follow all the stages of implementation smoothly. They play the role of inclusive host for the creation of a welcoming atmosphere and here they abandon their role as an expert and share power with group members and create a safe and friendly climate. They also play the role of a visionary to expand the realm of possibilities and to establish values and principles to guide the work. And it is the role of an asset seeker where they identify source of resilience, strength and ingenuity in the people they work with. They identify and build on strengths of group. They work to overcome self-doubts and mistrust of group members and they also value the experiential knowledge of group members and their role as listener conceptualizer is very important where their main job is to attend carefully to what people has to say about their lives, struggles, aspirations, etc. And as a pragmatic partner, they share knowledge and enable the group to solve problems in any stages of group work. They also balance attention to process with attention to outcomes. And in small group work, they also play the role of research partner. And this is not research in the sense of experimental designs, but rather in a broad sense of exploring and evaluating how they are doing, what's going wrong, what they are doing well, etc. And perhaps the toughest part of their work is to make changes last. And this is why they have to pay particular attention to their role as trendsetters. Therefore, their first priority is to institutionalize the innovation at the personal and local levels. And once that has been accomplished, it's important to take the message to other communities and groups. Research demonstrates that individual and small group interventions can help at the universal selective and indicated level. At the universal level, how small group work brings about changes could be understood by this example. There was a project devised called the School Transition Environment Project, abbreviated as STEP, where they try to ensure a smooth transition of students from the elementary level to high school. So the ninth grade students were made to spend most of their time in the same building with the same group of people. They had a small group of teacher and homeroom teachers looked after any issues and guided the students. Effectively, this created a smaller, more supportive environment within the larger context of the school. And compared with students in a control group, the students who participated in this arrangement were found to have more positive attitudes towards school, fewer absences and better marks. And how small group interventions bring about changes could be understood by the meta-analysis conducted by Geoff Nelson and colleagues where they try to find out whether programs such as home visitation and family preservation achieve reduction in abuse and whether early intervention programs have lasting effects in children's educational well-being. In both instances, Nelson and colleagues found that small group interventions were very effective. Parents felt better about their children, obtained better employment, and improved 
their rearing knowledge and techniques and children in turn became better learners and experienced higher family and social well-being and at the indicated level small group interventions are also effective in coping with adversities such as ill health or mental health problems so we see that in all the levels through a process of personal affirmation and self exploration individuals and groups have achieved higher levels of well being and at present most of the interventions are individual person centered or small group centered the drawback of this mechanism is that most interventions wish to fix the person damaged and not the powerful ones inflicting the damage so these are inherent risks of individual and small group interventions on one hand they are very helpful but on the other they divert attention from the meso and macro level of conflicts and moreover group members may have conflicts different views styles and background so this can create strain tension and conflict among group members these are some of the limitations and disadvantages of small group intervention let us now quickly take a look at some of the critical issues that influence mass mobilization and achievement of set goals through social action if we take empowerment community psychologists should ensure that in the process of social action the group whose cause is being advocated gets empowered and develop the skills and strengths to gain access to common resources for the development of the community and second is the issue of accountability the community psychologist has to make sure that there is consistent and continued communication among group members and that there is a process of clear accountability and transparency and for any interventions to succeed community psychologist has to build right alliances because social action process calls for participation of various stakeholders for the cause or issue and it is essential that the community psychologist uses skills to understand the perceptions of these stakeholders and their levels of interest and only then the community psychologist will be able to utilize their capabilities and skills in the social action process effectively and thus they should make sure that there is a balance in macro and micro issues and that they remain a political so having seen how small group interventions work the values their importance now let us see some of the small groups that are functioning in our society and are contributing significantly for its better functioning if we can take the examples of alcohol anonymous or parents without partners lost transition group separation divorce support group or groups for people who do not have a problem themselves but who have a family member with a problem example association for children with learning disabilities stress coping and support groups and there is a habitat for humanity began with a few people building houses for poor in a small town in georgia and since then they have built more than 175000 in countries across the world and we can also take example of rape crisis center which has been focal point for feminist organization for social change an examples of feminist social action include organizing public demonstrations to raise awareness about the violence against women and they also work on many other issues ranging from human domestic violence to trafficking immigration global migration leadership development and transformative education so from all these we can see how important small groups are so we can agree with what margaret mead has said in her quotation never doubt that a small group of thoughtful committed citizens can change the world indeed it's the only thing that ever has so a small group display the remarkable power of teamwork to transform to inspire and to succeed teams can accomplish amazing and seemingly impossible things because they have the ability to generate new energies 